Hi, my name is Daniel Mikalian, and this is a new strategy board game called Bet, invented by my family. Let's look at what comes in each unit. The front of the game box has an illustration of a castle, which symbolizes the meaning behind the word Bert. When you open the box, there are four colors of stackable tokens. There's an instruction manual, a pair of dice, a small two-sided board, and a large folding board with a short path and a longer path, one on either side. At the beginning of the game, each player chooses their own color of stackable tokens and places it on the starting corner of their choosing. Here's an example game setting where each player has chosen their own respective starting corners. Players may choose to start on the same starting corner as other players. Remember that the game moves in a clockwise direction. Now, let's look at how a player can move based on their dice roll. Let's assume you're the blue player and have just rolled a 2 and a 4. There are two options for the blue player. The first option is to move one token a total of two spaces, and move another token, a total of four. The second option that the blue player has is to move one token, the sum of two and four, or six spaces in other words. The blue player can play this either by playing two first, and then four spaces, or four spaces, and then two spaces. Here is an example that will demonstrate the fact that you cannot land on a bird in a game. If you are the blue player in this case, and you have just rolled a 3 and a 6, you cannot move this token at all. This is because if you tried to move it 3 spaces, you would land on a bird, which is not allowed. And if you tried to move it 6 spaces, you would also land on a bird. Obviously, you could not play at 9 spaces because you have to play either the 3 or the 6 first, both of which you cannot. Let's look at a game that is already in progress to see what movement options players have in a real game scenario. First, let's look at how players can create a bird in a real game. Remember that a bird is a tower with two or more of the owner's tokens on top. For instance, if you are the blue player and have just rolled a 2, you can move this blue token two spaces, landing on another blue token, and thus creating a bird. Second, let's look at how players can capture other players' tokens or towers in a real game. Remember that a player can only capture another player's token or tower if it is unprotected. In other words, if the other player's token or tower is not a bird. For example, let's say you are the blue player and have just rolled a six. You can move this token here, six spaces, landing on this unprotected red token, and thus capturing it. One important thing to keep in mind is that when a player creates an unprotected tower, no matter how many capture tokens are underneath, this unprotected tower will move as a single unit. For instance, if the blue player chose to move this tower two spaces, they would move it as if it were a single token. In this scene, let's look at how players can recover their own tokens which have been captured by other players. Let's assume you're the red player and have just rolled a five and a two. If you choose, you can play one of your tokens from this tower, a total of five spaces, landing on this unprotected tower and therefore capturing it. Because one of your own tokens was captured and is underneath, you now move it to the top and create a bird. However, you must remember that you cannot recover your own tokens which are underneath the bird. In this case, this red token cannot be recovered because even if the red player tries to play two, they cannot because it is a bird 
and you cannot land on it. In this scene, I will show you how to play tokens from your bird. Let's say you are the red player and have just rolled a 3 and a 2, and you wish to move tokens from this bird here. Remember, each die value only applies to one of your tokens. What this means is if you're going to want to move this bird, 2 and 3, you're going to have to split it up into single red tokens or unprotected towers. The captured tokens underneath are irrelevant. You can carry them along with your single red tokens or you can leave them behind. For instance, you could move one red token two spaces and one red token three spaces. Or you could move one unprotected tower three spaces or one token two spaces. You could even split the captured tokens at the bottom amongst the pieces that are moving. So you could move one unprotected tower two spaces as so and one unprotected tower three spaces. In this scenario I will show you how to play if you have just rolled a double. A double is when the score on each dice is the same. In this case, let's say you are the red player and have just rolled a 3 and a 3. That's a double. The main idea behind playing a double is that you must play, in this case, 3, or whatever score is on the dice, a total of 4 times. So the red player here must play 3 4 times. There are many ways the red player can do this. One way is for the red player to take one token and move it 3 spaces 4 times. It doesn't matter which token the red player chooses. Let's say the red player chooses to take a red token from this tower here. All the red player has to do is play it three times. One, two, three, four times. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Alternatively, the red player can move two tokens a total of three spaces twice. For instance, from this tower here, the red player can choose to play one of the tokens three spaces twice, one, two, three, one, two, three, and move this other token three spaces twice also, totaling to four times three spaces. There are many other ways players can reach a total of four. Another way, even, is to move four tokens three spaces each, meaning you are playing three four times. So the red player could play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three and one, two, three, all from this starting tower. Now, let's look at how to finish your tokens. Let's say you're the red player, and you have moved this bed almost all the way back to your starting corner, and you have just rolled a six and a five. You can finish your red tokens from this bed by splitting it up and moving one of your red tokens five spaces, finishing it, and this unprotected tower, six spaces, also finishing it. Remember that you do not have to land exactly on your starting corner to finish your piece. You can overshoot. However, if you land exactly on your starting corner and another player has a bed there, you cannot land on it and therefore cannot finish your token. For each token that you finish from your own color, so in this case two, every other player, active player on the board, must give you a token in their possession. In other words, one of their own colored tokens or a token that they have captured. So in this case, each player on the board is still active and in the game, so they must give you two tokens. The blue player can give you this captured token 
and one of their own tokens. The yellow player can give two of its own yellow tokens. And the green player can also give two tokens. Remember to keep this tower off to the side because at the end of the game, each player compares the size of their towers and the player with the biggest tower wins the game. Let's consider this endgame scenario where the only two active players left are the yellow player and the blue player. The yellow player's starting corner is over here and the blue starting corner is over here. If the yellow player has just rolled a 6 and a 5, the yellow player can move this unprotected tower and finish it. Most ideally by moving it 6 first. That way it captures this blue token here and then place 5 to finish. Since the blue player is the only active player left in the game, they must give a token to the yellow player since the yellow player finished one yellow token. Since the game is now over, it doesn't really matter. The blue player can give a token that's on the board or a token from the stack which the blue player has already finished. Now the yellow player adds these tokens to its stack and since it's the end of the game, each player compares the size of their stack of tokens, which they've finished. This token is irrelevant. And because the yellow player has the largest stack, the yellow player wins the game. 